Are you generous? Yes, generous. The world abhors cheap men. And it's been, this has been going around a lot that, you know, a certain segment of men have been, have been tagged as cheap. Fill in the blank. The research is in, man. The data is in. Generous males have better outcomes. And generous men are more are perceived as being more sexually attractive. So, if you're a generous man by nature, you're going to be perceived by women as more sexually attractive. But it has to be true generosity. It can't be tit for tat. It can't be uh well keep on going or are you cheap what's the opposite of bold bland the opposite of bold is bland are you ambitious what's the opposite of ambitious What's the opposite of ambitious? Let's use the word. Let's go find it. What's the opposite of what's the opposite of ambitious? What's the opposite of bold? Let's get that right. Now, before we continue, I want to talk about that generous part. Okay. Being generous. You know, I always find it. Hilarious, maybe funny, when people don't think that generosity will help them build wealth. They really do. They think working for their charity or going to an event where you feed people or doing something outside yourself is a waste of time. If you don't learn to be generous, I'm not saying we all start that way, but you can. And I'm not saying you can't even fake being generous. But I find it, let's not make this personal. I think that it's it's a good thing for you if you get out there and try to help other people. You don't have to give every damn thing. We know some of us live paycheck to paycheck. So you can't give it all. But I do say if you can just give a small percentage back to your community, to people around you, people you watch, Support your creators. Find something. I don't care. Get back to your church. Something. Because I think that's what makes the world move. I think that's what really will help you build wealth. Because, guys, you'll be surprised. I'm not saying every dime you give, you're going to get back. But the more you put into other people, the more you put into your friends and your family, the more you're just going to get back. People will be more likely to support you. And I'm not saying you got to do it publicly. You don't have to do this all in front of people's faces. But imagine this. And he's going to give this example as well. But imagine this. Have you? I remember when I was a young man, young and dumb, young and stupid before I really realized what um, I can't do these things. But when I was still living with my parents, I remember I used to, me and my friends used to go out to eat like maybe once every month, right? I remember one time we were at a restaurant with my buddy. He makes way more money than me now, or as far as I know, he does. I mean, I don't know what his life is. But when we were at the time in my life, he was very making quite a bit of good money. You know, we're talking we're in our young twenties. This man's probably making maybe sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, which is a lot for a young man. He could be making far more than that, but he was one of those country boys. So we go to this restaurant. We're all eating, <laughs> having a good time, you know, <laughs> having a good time. And the bill comes. And my buddy says something like, hey, here's a $10 tip. I say, well, here's a $20 tip. My buddy goes to say, uh, well, I'll make it 30 I said, I'll make it 40 He goes on and say 60 and I think by the time we got to the end of it, we ended up tipping this waitress around two hundred dollars. So we paid for damn near for our. We did far more than that, right? One of the things I do when I go to um, uh, a restaurant, right? Y'all know the percentage that we're supposed to give when we tip. 
And I guess some people are against tipping, but I think people, if you don't want to tip, then just don't go. But whatever. But one of the things I try to do, and maybe, and like I said, I'm not trying to make this personal, but I'm just giving you ideas, is whatever the percentage you normally tip, just go above that percentage, even if it's by 1%. Pick whatever percentage you want to, but just try to go above that 20%, you know, and give it to them. And I think that's good stuff. Now, that person shouldn't feel entitled to that. They shouldn't. But it's for you, man. Don't, don't, and I'm not saying you sit there and wait for the, to get the reaction. You give the money, uh, give the money, whatever you're going to give. Just get past that percentage of 20% and leave. Right? Put the money where it is. If it's cash, make sure they get it. Right? Don't, you know, there's thieves around. So if it's cash, you, you make sure you see them, put it in their hand and say, you have a good night. You bounce, you turn your back. You don't see reaction. You don't wait for none of that. And if you're tipping from card, you know, write it down. Pushing that generosity where you can. I'm not saying you can do it all the time. But when you when you have the opportunity to give back, do so. Because that, gener that generosity makes a huge difference in your own life, guys. When it comes to, like I said, building wealth and all this shit, it's hard. It's hard, especially when you're trying to find your right avenue. But the best thing you can really do is when you have a little bit, give a little back. You know what I mean? Obviously, try to do this while you're saving money, investing money. Make sure you get about, some people say get three months of income ready. I say have about six months, if you can, a year. Save as much as you can. Then after that, once you get that emergency fund, start investing. But investing doesn't mean just stocks. Investing doesn't mean just 401ks. It doesn't mean just going into your brokerage account. Investing can also mean in the people. And that doesn't always have to be money. Be money. That can be time. That can be going to watch somebody's <laughs> live stream. <laughs> but somebody else's live stream. I was watching a live stream tonight, and they gave, they gave me great ideas. You know, support him, supporting this young man. He's not a young man, older than me. But I was supporting this man's live stream, and he gave me some tidbits. Something that's important. Do something like that. Go to your local, I don't know, theater show in your community. Go to a local event at your event that's been thrown by your community. Do stuff like that and give your time. Back to the community, back to the kids, back to the people. Because that shit makes a difference. Generosity takes you way further along. This keeps adding to men should pay for everything. But see, y'all think it's just a simple, oh, well, I just got to pay for everything because um, I want women who are gold diggers. So you think what I think when people say men should pay for everything, it's just a simple, it's always a wealth thing. It's always a money thing. No. These little tidbits, the small details will lead you to be able to pay for everything, but you got to build up to it. I'm not saying you just come out the gate doing it because you got to be smart. You build up to it. But all these little things matter. Generosity. Let's get thing. Timid. The opposite of bold is timid. If you're not bold, you are timid. What's the opposite of bold? Timid. Type it in the chat room, timid. What's the opposite of bold? It's timid. And yes, there are far too many guys today who are timid as fuck. What's the app? What is the opposite of ambitious? Hot lips. Ladies. Hit squad. Blake. Blue. What's the opposite of ambitious? Lazy. Lazy, 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 lazy. This is going to get good, ain't it? And what's the opposite of generous? Selfish. Uh-oh. So, over my boys... Patron, my patron, especially my patron boys, join Patreon right here, especially because you want to get on the Patreon only streams. My boys, CIA is 80% of the men, confident, intelligent, and assertive. That's good if every man could get there. But second level, competitive, intriguing, and, and aggressive, that's what it takes to separate yourself from the pack. That means to just start waking up into being 
a leader, a power broker, an alpha male, as it were. But in order to be at the top of the top, you got to become the bag, bold, ambitious, and generous. So if you're not bold, ambitious, and generous, if you're not bold, what's the opposite of bold? It's timid. If you're not, not ambitious, you're lazy. And if you're not generous, you're selfish or cheap. TLC, motherfucker, you're TLC. Don't, don't know no scrubs. See how that shit work? Over here, my dudes are trying to become the bag, bold, ambitious, and generous. And you guys are straight up timid, lazy, and cheap scrubs. The universe just works that way. You can't make this shit up. Timid, lazy, and cheap. Who in the world wants to deal with a timid, lazy, and cheap man? You can fancy up cheap all you want to. Are you cheap? You can fancy it up and call it frugal, minimalist, thrifty, or whatever helps you sleep better at night, but the outcome is still the same. Wah, wah, wah. Whew. Let me go ahead and back up off of y'all because it's going to get tight. I don't know who you are, but you got to ask yourself, this is how we rank each other as men. It's time to grow up. Cheap behavior, bootlegging, dying and dash, 50-50. Cheap behavior. Huli, uh, where do you rank amongst men? That's what you got to ask yourself. What is your resume? Your resume. How old are you? See, how you find out how you rank amongst men is take your age and then ask yourself, what are men like my what are men my age accomplishing? What did I expect to have accomplished by my age? I'm not asking men of your race. I'm asking men of your age. You're 30, you're 40, you're 35 years old. Are you still in an entry level position? Are you 27 years old and you have no skills? Okay. If you're behind, you know it. At 23 years old is where the clock starts. From 18 to 23 is your years to figure it out. Those are high school, college, or military. But at 23, the world expects you to be out here and getting primed. But at 25, the world starts keeping count. If you're 25 years old, still living at home with mama, and you're not real, and you have no degree, no job, no, no I'm just 25 at home, 25 years old, and living home with mama as a man, you're a loser. See, we gotta, what we have to stop doing is we have to stop talking to men in, in soft terms because the world does not take it softly. The world looks at 25 year old guys that are at home with their mom or their parents as a loser. Now, I want to talk about that part the, the not being soft. And the pushing men where they need to be. First of all, I totally agree that when I look back now, I'm so glad when I first seen this video. That's when I started keeping rank on myself. Like, where should the hell should I be? I look up how much the average man at my, um, how much the average man should be making at my age. And I try to be above that, right? Obviously, my strength. Obviously, my weight. Obviously, my physical ability. All stuff that I know. So I'm below average in a lot of stuff. Not in strength. But uh, and obviously other things in life. So I think it's important that we do look at ourselves and say, where should we be at this point? Now, like you said, at 25 is where you start start getting going. You start getting your get thing. For me personally, it's kind of I, I see it more around 30 ish. Society has changed a little bit from people who are back, who grew up around his time frame. So about 25, 30 is where you really should start really start to start to figure it out. Okay, your 30s is probably going to be, hey, I'm going this way, I'm going that way. And you need to go ahead and just start heading towards it. And just go ahead and say, fuck it, failure is going to come along with it. I'm just going to give everything I got to do it. Right? And continue down that route. But the thing about being a loser. Now, if y'all remember, one of the last things I think I ever put on my community, I don't know if it's still out, but I put, I'm a fat loser. Never forget that. Okay? And the reason I've always been so harsh on myself, guys, it's not that I'm trying to put myself down. Not like I'm trying to say, oh, well, I'm all these things. 
when I say, I say these things to say I'm a loser. I say these things to say I haven't made it where I need to be. I say these things to say, wow, I'm a fucking failure. I say those things not to bring myself down, but to take a real look at myself. Because I think it's important if we don't treat each other, us as men, if we don't treat each other soft, it's in, then we allow ourselves to actually grow. Because if I was to sit here and tell you you're doing a good job and I meet you for the first time and you're 20, I, I had to tell a young man the other day. And I was being honest with him. It went amongst the lines of, if you think you're the best man out there working at this particular job, you're fooling yourself. Because if you think that if you are a man and you're working a job that makes $15 an hour, I had, <laughs> I told another young woman in this same vein. I asked her, you know, I said, you know, she was talking about marriage and I said, okay, well, you can marry this guy. And I said, but if you want to marry a man who's making more, you're probably going to have to go a little bit older. It is what it is. Men in their 20s, you know, it's just tough. Well, she says, he told me that this young man makes a lot of money. And I said, okay. Where does he work? She told me where he works. And I'm like, well, then if you think that's making money, if you think that's that's the, that's the, what she told me, I'm like, well, then you've never seen money in your life. And I'm not downing the young man. I'm not sitting here saying, hey, this young man's a, f I'm not sitting here saying this young man's a loser because at 20 years old, I don't expect you to be a billionaire or a millionaire or even making six figures or even making 80K. At 20, you're probably still in college, just living life. But I think, like I, Kevin said, around 25, 30 years old, we just got to start being honest with each other. I'm honest with myself every day. I never lie. When people ask me how much I make or people wonder what I do, I tell them I'm a fucking loser and I tell them the truth. I'll tell people I'm broke because I know what I want to make to not consider myself broke. And I'm so glad that there were men like Kevin Samuels or other men like Media Man or the lead attorney who got out there to say, hey, brother, $60,000 is broke. I, they're not trying to insult you. You can make a decent living making $60,000 a year. But at the end of the day, that I mean, if you, to really push your life into a different place. Now, if you want to make $60,000 a year for the rest of your days, go for it. I mean, life happens to all of us. I'm not saying a sixty thousand person is a sixty thousand dollar a year person is a loser, but we are not going to sit down and say sixty thousand dollars is a lot. It's not. It's not. Okay. So I don't mind ever saying telling myself I'm broke, or I'm a loser, or I'm fat, or I'm obese. I don't mind saying all these kind of things because it's like it's just true. I need to do better. I need to do better financially. I need to do better physically. And I need to do better with my, even my smarts. I, I need to always be learning. Always learning how to do things. As long as I can, until the day I can't. And life just goes on. Either I die or I just get too old and my life just, my body, my life, my body just falls apart. But I think being honest with a man is not insulting him. There's a difference between being honest with somebody and then being an asshole or being malice. If you don't say it with malice in your heart, if somebody says, hey, Trey, I'm 35 years old and I, I'm a construction worker and I make $12.50 an hour. Bro, you're behind. Bro, you're behind. And you're broke. Okay? I remember I was talking to a young lady. I'm sorry, I got so many stories. Talking to a young lady the other day. She told me she wanted to be a paraprofessional. A paraprofessional. And I said, so broke. You know? And I was just honest because this was a lady who was a little bit older. And I said, yeah, a paraprofessional? Yeah, that's a, that can be a great job. But you're going to be broke. That's paycheck to paycheck. A paraprofessional, you're going to struggle to pay your car bill. It just is what it is. I'm not knocking that profession. I don't care what you want to do in life. But just be honest with yourself. Like me, when I said I grew up and I wanted to be a pastor, uh, unless I was one of these mega church pastors, and we're not going to get too deep into that. But if I was going to be a pastor, my mama told me, <laughs> my mama, my mama, my mother, <laughs> my mother told me, you're going to be broke. When I said, I want mom, I want to be a pastor. She said, why? To be broke. And I was like, yes. But at least she was honest. I got no problem with somebody who wants to go give their life to the Lord and teach and be a servant and do that kind of stuff. But you're going to be broke. And that's okay. But at least be honest. We need to be honest with each other as men. Because when we don't do that, we get a bunch of men who are pissed off when life doesn't give them everything they want. 
men get pissed off at other men who are successful. They get pissed off at men who work hard. They get pissed off at men who marry certain women. They get pissed off at men who take care of their family. They get pissed off at men who drive a certain car. They get they then they grow up and become these incels. Let's let's call it what it is. They grow up to be these incels. Get the pissed off at every dude who has some kind of advantage because they decided to go this way and you didn't. You said you wanted to work your nine to five, but you didn't want to push yourself to be to work those extra hours. No, you wanted to work your nine to five and go home, which is fine. But those kind of guys don't get promoted. Those kind of guys don't go further. You wanted to reach your quota if you work in sales. You wanted to reach your KPI. You wanted to reach your 15 sales, call it a day, and just give up. You didn't want to go for 30 to 40 because you don't want to do more than what they pay you to do, even though you have no skills. For those people who get out there and talk about uh, you make minimum wage so you give minimum effort, well, motherfucker, you will always get minimum wage because you give minimum effort. If you give minimum effort, you're going to get minimum effort in college, minimum effort at your job, minimum effort in your life. If you always give minimum effort in every category, not saying you're going to be great in everything you do. Like I said earlier, failures happen. But if you give minimum of stuff everywhere you do, everywhere you go, motherfucker, you're going to get those kind of outcomes. So, guys, always be pushing yourself to be something better. But if you want an average life and have the average um, outcome, then do that. But at the end of the day, you need to know where you rank amongst other men. If you rank low, you rank low. Don't bitch about it. Don't cry about it. Get as far as you can. And this is the last thing I'm going to say about this on this subject right quick. You may not get to the top rank. But get as close as you can. Because if you're 60, if you're 60 years old and you realize you rank low, yeah, your time is pretty short. The chances of you going from a broke 60-year-old to a millionaire, 80-year-old, probably pretty slim. Get as far as you can. Because once it's over, guys, it's over. Either, either you're going to die and it's over, or your body's going to break down and you're going to have a slow death. Those are really the only two outcomes you get in life. Death. So when it's over, it's over. Push as far as you can. And it, this is something I have to tell myself every day, too. I'm an obese man. But I can sit here and say, well, I'm fat. Just give up. Or I'm going to be like, well, when it's over, it's over. Every day, I've been trying to do these things called nickels and dimes. Or at least I'm starting them. You know, I push a lot into being a power lifter. That life is over. And I'm kind of lost. I'm being honest with you. I'm lost. I don't know how not to live heavy and do cardio and do all that shit. I lost a lot of weight, got it all back, because I really don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But one, one thing I can do is ride my little stupid little bicycle I got, ride it as much as I can, and do nickels and dimes, which is something I learned from David Goggins. Ten pull-ups, five push-ups, can't do that. Five push up I mean, ten push-ups, five squats. Whatever it takes, just do that as long as you can until you can't do no more. And that's what I do. I'm a big guy, so doing push-ups for me is 75% of my body weight, which is pretty decent, okay? It's the small things, man. Just slowly work your way there. No matter where you are, if you choose today, hey, fuck it, I'm just going to give a little bit more effort tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll do one extra push-up. Tomorrow, I'll make one extra video. Tomorrow, I'll, I'll read one extra sentence. I don't really give a fuck, because at the end of the day, it's, you're making improvements. Because you got to start somewhere. Because if you start too big, you try to eat the whole fucking elephant, and you try to eat the whole elephant that day, you're not going to be able to eat an elephant. But you can eat an elephant. One bite at a time. Because we have to look at your resume. And the longer you go with holes, gaps, or no achievements on your resume, the lower you rank. See, if you have a resume and you got 10 years of the same first year, you you only have 10. You don't have 10 years experience. You got 10 years of the same one year. You're supposed to progress and move up. Life is about forward movement. So what is your resume? Are you light on accomplishments? Socio socioeconomic accomplishments, meaning are you light on network? Are you light on friends, relationship, marriage? Are you light on money? I mean, are you 30? Are you how old are you? Are you 30 years old and making 40 grand? 
then you are you're you're broke. You're broke. Paycheck to paycheck is broke. Okay. What? <sighs> Understand something. That's the general thing. And here's the reality, guys. We all, as men, we all know this. As men, we all know this. What a man wants, he goes for. When a man truly wants something, he goes for it. But when a boy, when a boy or when a male wants something, he tries to steal it. Now, now we're about to get upset. When a man wants something, he goes for it, we'll see. Stacey, are you causing trouble in my chat room again? Give me a time you out, girl. When a man wants something, he goes for it. Hold on. At RJ, these are the average salaries, but over here, RJ, we don't deal with average. I, already, I said that from out of the gate. We don't deal with average over here. Average is a curse word over here. What a man wants, he goes for. But when a male wants something, gentlemen, ladies, gentlemen, when a male wants something, he tries to steal it. He tries to hustle or negotiate his way to a lower price. That's what he tries to do. That's what a male tries to do. Why does he do that? Because he know because he knows he can't pay full price. He knows he can't pay full price. He knows he can't pay full price, so he decides that he wants to try to hustle or talk his way into it. And in that way, he feels like he's won twice. He's got it for less. He's got it for less. He got the person who's got the thing to give it, uh, to diminish their value. And he feels like he's got over on the system. Who wants to be around? Who wants to deal with people like this? Despise the free lunch. Despise the free lunch. What is offered for free is dangerous. It usually involves a, either a trick or a hidden obligation. What is worth is worth paying for. By paying your own way, you stay clear of gratitude, guilt, and deceit. This is, it is often wise to pay full price. There are no cutting corners with excellence. There are no cutting corners with excellence. There are no cutting corners with excellence. Be lavish with your money and keep it circulating. For generosity is a sign and a magnet for power. Any man worth his salt knows what I just said was true. And if you are going to say, yeah, but you are cheap. You are TLC, cheap. Like it or not, I don't make the rules. Always despise the free lunch. So despise the free lunch. <laughs> I love that part about being deceitful and trying to get over on people. Because you know who used to do that a lot? Well, <laughs> you know, I was always trying to fool people and try to get the most money out, out of them as I could. My, my hat looks funny as hell. But I always tried to get the most out of people. I always tried to deceive people. And then I'd just be going home and laughing to myself like, I got over on them. <laughs> and it was stupid. Duh. Because you know what happened? You know who got all that karma? You know who, who, who ended up being a fucking failure because I always tried to get over on people? I tried to steal so much. I always used to think I'm so persuasive. No, it's called manipulation, motherfucker. Manipulation. All the people who helped me, all the people who had good heart, good hearts, they're still living good lives as far as I know. Not me. You know what's so crazy? I want to talk to y'all about this. Let's just break it down a little bit more spiritually a little bit. Okay. Sorry, I want to write it like that. 
this karma shit catches up to you. And I'm going to tell y'all the truth. If you think. Let me think that. Let me cut off. If you think that you can be a person who's deceitful and manipulative and you manipulate a lot of people, you try to fool a lot of people, and you think that one day you'll be able to just turn around and be like, oh, man, I'm sorry for all the things I did. You can do that. But, motherfucker, you're going to be tortured. I cannot tell you the mental pain I've gone through from all the people I hurt, all the bridges I burned. I went through hell mentally. My mental health went down. All the people I fucked over, all the people I screwed over, all the bills I didn't pay, all the time that I spent money on myself instead of doing what I was supposed to do, that shit caught up to me. That shit caught up to me. Some things were physical. Yeah, I slept on the floor. Obviously had electricity cut off. I ended up on the streets. But that part, that was hard. But that shit you can get over. The mental part. The tortures. I couldn't sleep at night. I'm not talking about figuratively. I mean literally. I went through a part of my life where I couldn't even sleep in my own bed for months. I was having panic attacks. Couldn't sleep in my own bed. I panicked when I took showers. I was crying more than I've ever cried in my life. I would wake up in just the worst sweats of my life. I would go out and go for a walk and felt like my whole world was flipped upside down. My life felt like a movie. I cried every night. I'm not a crier. I may tear up here and there, and I said, like, once again, I only tear up about certain situations. But I'm talking about I'm dead ass crying. I would talk to people and be crying to them. I would go talk to other men, cry to them. But I got to talk to women, cry to them. You should cry. I thank God every day I can go to sleep. Every day. And when I wake up, I try to do the best I can. Whether I felt the night before or not. Because there was a point in my life I couldn't sleep. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's the part of my life where I lost a lot of weight. I was so mentally broken, I couldn't even eat. Literally. Tried to put food in my mouth, threw up. I was destroyed from my past. I don't want that for you. But if you think you're going to be able to go through life deceiving people and fucking people over and trying to, and we'll, we'll take it out of that here in a second. But that kind of stuff will catch up to you. But now let's take it a little bit lighter. For you people who always trying to get a, get a, get, get over on somebody, like, meaning, not like that. When you're always trying to look for a sale, you're always trying to find a way how not to pay somebody. For you people who have your favorite creator, whoever that is out there, for you guys who say, I'll support them by watching their YouTube channel but you or their Twitch or whatever they are, but you never give back, you never support their Patreon, you don't buy any of their merch, any of that kind of stuff, you're always trying to wait until they go on sale or something, not because you're broke, but because you just don't want to do that. You're like, no, I'm not going to pay him that. He don't deserve that. He's the rich. He's got YouTube money. He's got Twitch money. He's got... Keep doing what if that's what you want to do, cool. But you're one of the, you're the type of person who won't ever see that real generosity. There, are there people in the world? Yes, I know there's people in the world who are pure evil and still make money. But y'all gotta stop worrying about those motherfuckers. Worry about the vast majority. A lot of people who make money. I'm talking about normal money. I'm not talking about the oligarchs. I'm talking about normal money. People who make that money in the world and you see them, you see them driving nice cars, living nice lives, and they seem kind of happy for the most part. And somehow, some way, they still give out, they still give way more money than you do, and they got way more money than you. Right? You can't even put a dollar towards anything to help anybody. And you see them giving hundreds, thousands of dollars away. Thousands. And you can't find a way to put 50 cents towards somebody. You can't even find it in your heart to tip someone. 
You're the kind of person that's like, tip somebody, fuck that. I'm not donating nothing. I'm not giving to my community. I'm not doing all that shit. Fuck them. Okay? Do whatever you want to do. But I'll tell you, there are people in this world who do shit tit for tat, like he said, that do shit to get shit back. And there's people who just, it really brings joy to them because they know what it feels like to not either have it or they know they got it and they're like, fuck it. I got enough. I'm willing to give away. Here, man, you want this? You want that? Y'all don't know these kind of people, but there's motherfuckers who give away cars. There's people who will buy people vehicles. There's people who will buy people houses. Y'all don't know those kind of people, but there's people out there who really just be giving money like it, like it's hotcakes. They just be, bloop, 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 bloop. it ain't nothing to them. And somehow money still keeps coming back to them. There's something about that, guys. Whatever you believe in, there's something about that. Those people who can give charitably, and it's just something they love to do, not something they feel like they have to do. They just give out money. It's like, you know what? I know that person needs the car. I see how hard they work. Bam, money. A car. And you'll see, you'll see this, guys. The people who get jealous of that shit. Somebody gets a car. You'll know who those motherfuckers are. And somebody you know, let's say you're working a job. McDonald's. I love to use that place. You're working at McDonald's. Some something random happens. One of your coworkers gets a free vehicle, right? A nice little truck, a nice little car. You'll see. Watch the other coworkers who are like, "I'm so glad you got a car, man. I'm happy for you." And you'll see the motherfuckers are like, "Why did he get a car? I need a car. I need this. I need that." And I'm talking about even the people who ain't got shit. Somebody else got a car and they still got to walk to work. I'll give you an example. I remember at one point in my life, I was living okay. Not well, okay. And I had a really nice car. Really nice car for me. And I remember feeling so cool because I was like, man, I got a nice ass car. It was a sports car. This bitch, when you stepped on the pedal, room, I mean, push you to the seats. Had a had crazy sound system. And I remember rolling up to this area like, I'm, I'm, I'm that, you know what I'm about to say. And you know what was a lesson I learned that day? Wish I would have carried it on. I can't say I learned the lesson and I figured it out. But one thing, I, I, I'll never forget that day because I rolled up and there's, I rolled up in my car. And then there was this dude who was walking. And I'm sitting here thinking everybody going to like me because I got a car. I'm, I, I, I'm young. I'm stupid. And I'm thinking like, oh, yeah, everybody going to fuck with me now. Nope. The guy who was walking, everybody was like, hey, what's up, man? What's going on, dude? And everybody talked so highly about this dude. And he was walking to this shit. I'm driving a nice-ass car. Better, one of the nicest cars in the fucking parking lot. But this dude who's walking, you know why? You know why? The difference between me and him. Yeah, I had a nice car and I had a nice job. But not compared to this motherfucker. This motherfucker had this. He had that mind. And even though he had fucked up in his life, people still wanted to listen to him. Because they knew what he was saying and the stuff he did wasn't bullshit. It was real. That was fake. I'm not going to lie. I could afford that car, but I really couldn't. You know what I mean? I got that car for vanity. I could have got a way cheaper car and lived a way better life. That was fake. It was all in my head. Everything I talked about was bullshit. It was just shit I heard other places. It was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. Because I thought for once in my life, I finally had made it. And I realized that I still wasn't shit. Still not shit today. So when you want something in this life, pay for it, man. Go out and do above and beyond. Help the people around you in your community. Support your people who your creators. The people you watch their shit. Buy those people's merch. I love how Chris Jones or Beast Mode Jones on always says, buy 30 of them bitches. Motherfuckers hate on Greg Duchette because he always promotes his shit. Motherfucker, if you don't want to support him, don't watch. 
But to be mad at him because this man likes to say, hey guys, don't forget to build my GO2 Max and my Turk Builder. Shit, I haven't memorized he says it so much. I remember B. Smoke Jones always saying, by 30 minimum, Bruno needs some snacks. Because these motherfuckers are making a living for their family. And if you really fuck with them, buy that shit. Buy that shit, man. It's okay. It's all right. All right. Anyway, pay full price for shit. Stop always trying to be that stingy, cheap mother sucker.